oh, I'm so sorry to hear about your rough periods and the endometriosis. That is just really tough. Um, the good news is that you can definitely move things in a more positive direction here. So you can work with a functional medicine doctor who specializes in hormone balance and, and get a full hormone panel done and get a picture of, of where all your hormones are at through your cycle. And then from there, you can start to build a strategy of how you can really improve your hormone balance. There's, you know, of course, things like making sure you get great sleep and have a good diet with plenty of healthy fats, for example, that are overall supportive of all hormone health. But when you get a picture of exactly where your hormones are at, you may be able to start creating a bit more of a customized and, and personally tailored approach to taking you from where you are to where you want to be. Now, specifically with endometriosis, uh, some things that are often found to be very helpful are progesterone cream, uh, taking some form of long chain omega-3s like fish oil, krill oil, or algae oil, uh, using Vitex, also known as chase tree berry, that helps to bring up progesterone levels, and milk thistle can be a very supportive herb. But more than any of those, the herb I want to focus on here is called pycnogenol. This is also a French maritime pine bark extract is how it's referred to. And this has been uh, traditionally used as a natural remedy for treating endometriosis. And this is not just something with traditional use, but it's also something that has had an interesting bit of modern research done on it. So there was a study that was published in the Journal of Reproductive Medicine. And in this study, you had 58 women with endometriosis and they looked at them uh, at four weeks, 12 weeks, 24 weeks, and 48 weeks after starting a treatment. Now, in this program, 32 patients were in a group taking pycnogenol, and they took 60 milligrams of pycnogenol for every day, orally, obviously, for 48 weeks. The other 26 people in the study, they were taking uh, the standard medical approach, and they were taking gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists. And so one group is doing pycnogenol, the other group is doing a form of hormone therapy. And so in the pycnogenol group, they were slowly but steadily reducing the endometriosis symptoms. Meanwhile, in the other group, in the hormone therapy group, it really actually was more impressive at first. So at first it was looking like this is gonna be the better way to go, but although it was more effective at first, at the 24 week point, then the scores that they were doing in terms of how they were analyzing the, the state of the endometriosis, started showing that it was getting worse again. So this is showing this is not really a long-term solution, whereas pycnogenol starts off slower, but as we see with these natural things, it steadily builds at a sustainable rate rather than a lot happening at once and then things get worse again. So when they were taking pycnogenol, they found that it didn't mess up the menstrual cycles and didn't mess up estrogen levels, uh, whereas these both had some problems when they were doing the hormone therapy on the other side of the experiment. So the conclusion of the researchers was that this posed uh, a possibility of being a very potent and very effective therapeutic alternative to the conventional hormone therapies that are often done out there. And one last thing I wanna mention, another avenue to pursue simultaneously is acupuncture. So they've looked at uh, people in studies who were doing acupuncture and they found that compared to control groups, they experienced much more relief from endometriosis. So wait a second, I almost forgot one element to this. So in a situation like endometriosis, a key element to remember here is we're dealing with a lot of scar tissue and adhesions. So what I'm about to suggest doesn't go to the root of the cause as something like pycnogenol or dealing with hormone balance in a sense would, or at least get as close to the root cause as we possibly can. But why not do something natural that is going to help address symptoms at the same time? So what we want to think about here is what helps to eat up the scar tissue and adhesions, systemic enzymes. So here we want to think about two specific systemic enzymes, serapeptase and natokinase. And you take these not with food, because then they'll just be used up for digesting the food. You take them away from food on an empty stomach with plenty of water. Ideally, you want to get ones that are enteric coated, that offers them an extra level of protection, because these are very sensitive and easily destroyed. You want to make sure they get into your, uh, into your system and get dispersed while still fully intact and in good shape. So that is another great tool to take advantage of. I know you must have been going through a lot in recent times with this, uh, but I hope some of these tools will help you get to a better place where you can get a bit of relief and start feeling the best again. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and look forward to seeing you all again next time.